What's up? It's Raphael, NBA Draft Junkies. I wanted to thank each and every person that has watched one of my videos, subscribed to my channel, or even left a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I think there's a button. Maybe it's on this side or it's on this side. I don't know, but click and hit subscribe. Hit the bell at the bottom or on the side of the subscribe link. So that way you can be notified every time I drop a video. My goal for this particular draft class is to drop at least 100 videos between now and the NBA draft. And in those 100 videos, I would like to break down your favorite prospects and just kind of give my opinion on, you know, where I think they stand as a, as a potential NBA player. Right now, I'm at about 9,600 followers. My goal is to reach 10,000 within the next 30 to 60 days. I have a lofty goal of reaching maybe 15 to 20,000 subscribers between now and the draft. So hopefully I can get to that point. But if I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. I'm going to continue working and continue dropping content as much as possible. I've kind of chilled out within the last few weeks or so. I'm, I'm, I'm in China right now and I went home to the States for Christmas and I just haven't been able to put out as much content as I would like to, but I'm, I'm back on it. In this video, I'll break down film on Seton Hall senior guard Miles Powell. Now, if you're not familiar with Powell's game, I can sum it up to you in one word. Buckets. Powell is one of the best scorers in the country and will go down as one of the best scorers in Big East history. Now, let's take a look at what makes Powell a prolific scorer on the college level and why I think he's an NBA prospect. Powell is a big time scorer that averaged 23 points per game as a junior and is hovering around 22 points per game midway through his senior year. He is currently 10th in the nation in scoring even though he's only playing 30 minutes per game, which is around 6 minutes per game less than what he played last season. Powell's greatest strength is his outside shooting and ability to make tough shots. I consider him more of a shot maker than a shooter. The other three on the floor right now have a combined 10. No way. Oh, my goodness. No. Powell. Now Powell. Oh, my. Real public sense of humility so far, and it has been successful. Powell off the screen, pulls up for 15. Nothing but. Here's why I consider him a shot maker. Outside shooting will always be in demand but it's easier to find an outside shooter than it is to find a three-point shot maker. It requires shifty ball handling, good footwork, a quick effortless release, and deep shooting range to be able to shoot threes off the dribble the way Powell does. It's a very difficult shot to make, and when Powell is in his bag, he makes it look easy. That's from Colorado State, works his way around the screen, and it hits. Powell, quick release. Boom. Burton slow to get up behind the play. It's a five on four. That's what happens. Lawyer right in his hip pocket. He knows he can elevate. Whoa. He knows he can elevate. D, that's when he gets things in the lane, too. Powell off balance. Three. How did he get that? Powell's ability to shoot coming off screens or pin downs really helps his case as an NBA prospect. He's an undersized combo guard that will have to adjust from being a ball dominant college scorer to an NBA role player. Being able to score from off the ball motion sets allows him to complement a star player and make life easier on the offensive end based off shooting gravity alone. I believe his ability to play off the ball is what makes him a special scorer. Offensive coaches, but instead we said, no, oh, we're tough defenders. And there is Powell. Miles Powell does this time. He wants the ball to finish this game off for three. Got it. While mostly known for his outside shooting, Powell is pretty good at getting downhill and attacking the rim. Despite lacking elite physical tools and being a below the rim finisher, he's shooting around 55% at the rim through 17 games this season while dealing with ankle issues that have limited his drives to the bucket. His 5.6 free throw attempts per game currently ranks second in the Big East, only behind the nation's leading scorer, Marcus Howard. Powell is able to avoid shot blockers by finishing his dribble drives to the basket with a variety of floaters and runners. This will be important for him on the next level going against NBA rim protectors 
as he would likely face hard closeouts and be forced to put the ball on the floor. Too much in the Bahamas in their last game against St. Paul as well. Powell, Paul, for Michigan State. Powell, hard down the lane, the run off the... You know, those hidden plays. Look at Powell going up against two screens. Powell's into Condit, floats it up and off the way. His compact, stocky, and muscular frame allows him to absorb and finish through contact. At the 17-game mark this season, Powell has converted 13 and 1 opportunities. Francis Nixon on Powell. Isolation. And the foul count the goal. 32 to 27 lead. Powell curling down the lane. Hangs in the air. Makes it. Here's Powell looking for his first points of the game. The most underrated part of Powell's game is his passing and court vision. Now don't get me wrong, he's a scorer first, second, and third, and putting the ball in the basket is his ticket to the NBA. But I feel his improvement as a playmaker is promising. He has shown flashes of good court vision and being able to make high level reads, finding open shooters off the pick and roll or on driving kicks. He also has shown he can hit the roll man and create easy baskets for lob threats. If Miles Powell can continue to make strides as a passer and playmaker, he could be a steal for a team drafting late in the first round or early in the second. Away. Mamu Kelishvili. His skill, his length more than anything else. Just needs to put on a few pounds, but he's got a lot. Kale again from three. Powell scoreless thus far.